we're going to start by finding the circle in a flower. If you draw an imaginary line between the tips of the petals on the face of this lily, it roughly makes a circle. The circle is easier to see in other flowers. This composite flower, the outside edges of the petals, if I connect those with a line, I have a circle right there. If I can see the circle in the face of a flower, that will help me draw it, and it's also, as you're about to discover, it will help me draw the symmetry of that flower. I'm going to start by roughly making a circle. I have a hard time drawing a perfect circle. Um, but this is what I would do with my pale blue pencil. Basically work in the shape of a circle here. And by placing crosshairs through the middle of this circle, I've found the center. From there, the outside edge of this circle will help me determine the length of my petals. And there's a symmetrical daisy. This circle trick also works for three-petaled, four-petaled, five-petaled, or six-petaled flowers. But in each of those cases, there's a few little tricks that will help you get the tips of those petals to be symmetrically arranged around the outside of the circle. Let's start by taking a look at a four-petaled flower. This is the easiest one. If I have a circle, those crosshairs right through the middle of it, can help me locate where the tips of my petals would be. I don't even have to draw crosshairs through it. I could simply make little tick marks at the edges, and if my flower is coming from here, I have a four-petaled flower. Getting a five-petaled flower to be symmetrical is a little bit more difficult. Let's first think about the symmetry of a five-pointed star. If you are a genius at geometry and can draw a perfectly symmetrical star in the middle of a circle, you'll separate that circle into five equal sections. But I find whenever I try to draw a star, it's in one way or another lopsided. So what I'm going to do is just look at a few features of this star in the circle that will help me be able to draw a circle and place my five dots without worrying about this star. I'm going to call this the head, these two parts the shoulders, and these the feet of my star. The head is going to be right at the top of my circle. Let's take a look at the shoulders and notice that if I make an equator, a line halfway through this circle, those shoulders are just a little bit above that center line. So people will often draw them out right at the sides where they would be on a four petaled flower, but they're actually going to be a little bit above halfway. And what about the feet? They are up off the bottom, just a tad here, but not as far up as the shoulders are above the equator line. So down here, down here, I'll place my feet. I do that and I have a five petaled flower. So once again, I'll draw my circle, put in my head. The next two points are going to go a little bit above 
the halfway mark. The others are going to be close to the bottom, but you see this distance here from the head down to one of the shoulders? These feet are going to be about that same distance apart. I place those in. And I'm drawing my five petal flower. Let's take a look at some tricks to help you place the petals of a three petal flower. If I superimpose a perfect equilateral triangle into this circle, that would work great. However, that's hard to do. Again, my geometry skills are subpar. So here's a simpler way to do it. We're going to put the first corner, the top corner of the triangle, at the top of the circle. The other two are going to be somewhere down below here. Where? Well, if again I visualize that equator of the circle and look at the base, the next two are going to be right halfway between those two lines. In other words, a quarter of the way up the circle. So without drawing all those extra lines, if I have a circle and a top, I'm going to go a quarter of the way up the side here and place my dots. I now have the points which will help me be able to draw a three-petaled flower symmetrically. That same trick can help us draw a six-petaled flower. Except this time, in addition to the quarter at the bottom, there will be a set of points a quarter of the way from the top. So one at the top, one at the bottom, and one point at each of those intersections except that center line. Note that in a six-petaled flower, there will always be one petal directly opposite another. So if I'm coming from here, I have one petal here, one petal directly opposite that, one petal here, one directly opposite that, one petal here, and one directly opposite that. Without drawing all of those extra lines, Let's make a six-petaled flower, a point at the top and the bottom. I'm then going to come a quarter of the way down and a quarter of the way up. When I'm doing this, I'm often thinking, oh, I'm leaving too much space in the middle there. But when I put my petals in, you'll see that that's actually going to work symmetrically. If you take a close look at six-petaled flowers, what you'll often notice is that three of them are on top of the other three. And the two sets of three petals may look slightly different from each other. Very often what you're looking at is one set of petals on top and one set of petal-looking sepals that are underneath those petals. Sepals are the, the little structures that usually cover up a flower. That's actually what I'm seeing here in this flower here. I have one petal, two petal, three petal, and then I have one, two, three sepals sticking out underneath those. So those are tricks to get the symmetry for a many-petaled flower, like a daisy, just making those crosshairs through the middle, getting the circle, and dropping in petals from there. We've looked at tricks for a three-petaled, a four-petaled, a five-petaled, and a six-petaled flower. Once you've drawn your circle and placed those symmetrical points out around its edge, those can help you place narrow-leaved petals or also wide petals Take a look at this. If I have a circle here. I've been demonstrating 
that drawing petals and, and using as my example drawing petals that are fairly narrow. In these cases, each of those points shows you where the tip of the petal goes. But, let's say you're drawing a flower with broad petals. And we have those same five points. Instead of thinking the tip of the petal is going to go to there, think of these lines here can show you where the edges of individual petals go. So I might have my first petal coming up basically here and then tucking in behind this one here. This next petal can come up here. So here, rather than the tip of the petal, I am showing the edges of the petals. That's a little bit easier to do, way to draw petals that are broad. So these points, one, two, three, four, five, can show you the tips or the edges between, depending on whether or not you are drawing a flower that is narrow petaled or broad petaled. Experiment with these techniques. Train yourself to be able to draw a circle, place your spots around it quickly and easily. How does that look for the six petaled? How does that look for the five petaled, the four petaled, the three? Once you feel comfortable doing that, you're ready to take these symmetrical flowers and start to tilt them at different angles. We'll begin foreshortening based on this same symmetry.